Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's do a review of Deep Rock Galactic Survivor, shall we? So this is an early review, as the game is in early access, and I've only been playing it for a little bit, but I thought, you know what? I've played the game, I have some thoughts, let's put them together into a review. So, what type of a game is Deep Rock Galactic Survivor? Well, it is a bullet heaven ARPG like Vampire Survivors Halls of Torment, but in the Deep Rock Galactic universe and you do Deep Rock Galactic things while you are shooting all of the baddies around you. So the Steam page says Deep Rock Galactic Survivor is a single player survivor like auto shooter wield the full arsenal of Deep Rock Galactic, take on hordes of lethal aliens, mine riches, and unlock powerful upgrades. It's one dwarf against all of Planet Hoxes. So, this came out of Early Access earlier this year, February 2024. It's by Funday Games and Ghost Ship Publishing. And the tags by users are dwarf, which is awesome, action roguelike, bullet hell, and roguelite. And those are all pretty good descriptors. This is Vampire Survivors with Dwarves and Mining. That's fine. That's a good way to look at this. But it doesn't tell you whether or not the game is fun. So, and worth playing. And that's what we're going to do. In this review, I'm going to give you my grade of the early access of Deep Rock Galactic as of April 2024. And I'm going to also make a recommendation on whether or not you should purchase it. I'm not going to spoil anything about the game. I'm just going to give you my feedback based on my experience with this version of the game. So the first thing I like to talk about is the fun factor. Is Deep Rock Galactic Survivor a fun game? And yeah, it's really fun. Um, for me so far, it's extremely fun because the game is beautiful, has cool voice acting and sound effects, is very well put together in terms of UI, presentation, the game has no bugs, like everything runs silky smooth and is as expected. So in that sense, it's very fun. Also, I think it's cool how they incorporated mining into the game and you can use mining to alter the enemy pathing, make new shortcuts for yourself, and also do a kind of risk or reward where you're going for the different ores and gems to upgrade your overall account, which is what you do in all of these roguelikes. It's, it's you die and you have to start over from scratch, but you keep a bunch of the resources that, and you can then purchase upgrades to your damage, your mining speed, your experience gain, stuff like that, and then you can unlock new weapons, unlock new artifacts, and new characters. And that's the kind of meta progression behind the scene. So that stuff is all done very well, and it's fun. And the first few times I played it, my first two runs, I'm like, oh man, this is like super, super fun. However, what I will tell you as a drawback is that while it is fun, and it is polished, there isn't as much variety with the itemization and the weapon upgrades as I would like to see. And hopefully they change this. So what I mean is like, in a game of this type, you level up and you get three choices of what you want to do with your weapon and yourself. And these need to be meaningful choices in order for the gameplay loop to really shine. Because right now, just the overall playing of the game is super fun. But most of your choices are like increase fire rate, increase damage, increase reload speed. And so it's all basically just like you're going to do more damage. Or, you know, maybe you get more health or you move faster. But that's it. Like there's no crazy wonky synergies where you get some unreal build and you're doing some neat min-maxing, or you have a combo that's happening that's just blowing up the screen. It's really just like, okay, yeah, that's more damage. I'll take that, and yep, that does more. So that makes sense, and it's cool, but it's pretty mindless, and it doesn't allow you to really flourish with, you know, creating a build or something 
that is unique or where you have like some awesome run going because you got this drop. Now, a fun thing that they do is that they add rarity to the choices that you make. So, you know, you get common, uncommon, rare, epic, legendary, and that feels really cool. But still, the choices are pretty narrow and I would love to see it expanded to give you some just more variety and zany things that you could do so that each run didn't feel as similar to the previous run. Now, that being said, everything works like you would expect, so it's a fun game. The next thing I talk about in a review is the control of the game. How does Deep Rock Galactic Survivor control? And I was playing with a gamepad on PC and it controlled beautifully. It's so simple because there's basically two buttons. There's pause and there's move your guy around. So in that sense, it's awesome. Like the control is flawless. Uh, I had no problems moving or mining, like doing all of the things that the game wants you to do. The controls are perfect. Selecting the different options, all of that is great. So controls are flawless. What about a subset of controls I like to talk about, which is the UI and the systems in the game. So this kind of goes back to what I was saying. If we start with the systems, here's what works with the systems. Moving around, meta progression, mining in the game, fighting enemies, being, you know, a bullet heaven auto shooter, all of those things work as intended. Everything is great. Picking up the orbs, seeing the damage, the, you know, this is all great. The systems that are flagging and kind of lagging behind and, and holding back the experience are the meaningful choices that you make when you're upgrading your character. Now, maybe, maybe if I put in 100 hours, you know, or even just like I put in 15 hours, you know, because I, I only have, a, a, I'm not even that close at all. Like I'm like a, a little over an hour into the game. Maybe you get like 5, 10, 15 hours into the game and you unlock so many options that... It, you do get to make more interesting choices when you're leveling up. But for right now, it's not, it doesn't feel that way. You know how like in Vampire Survivors, yeah, you do want more damage and you want more of this and you know, that's, that's cool. But where it comes into play is like when you combine two weapons and you upgrade and you get like this broken build where you're just throwing daggers like a machine gun because you've leveled that up and then you know you've got some other stuff going to help you carry on right now it doesn't feel that way it's like okay here's your weapons and you're leveling them up and you know there's there's three or four choices for each one and that's it so that system is what needs to be upgraded also the meta progression is cool but it could be deeper it could be more intricate right now it's like very by the numbers and and it works but it's not entirely unique such that i'm like oh my gosh yes so th that's kind of where i am on the systems they, they mostly they work but the upgrade reward and choices that you make those systems all need to be buffed up as far as the ui goes it's flawless i love it i think it's amazing it's one i mean like i love a good ui and it looks great it's clean um the the graphics look exciting and polished it looks like just a, a done game as far as the ui is so for me the ui is amazing the story is the next thing i like to talk about and this isn't a game that has a ton of story because it's not first of all it's an auto shooter so you're not really playing it for that reason but also it does have cool story if you're from deep rock galactic like you'll notice the touches, the voice acting, the references, and that'll be cool for you. But as far as playing, you're mining, trying to make money and fighting aliens. And that's, it's just mindless fun. So it's not meant to have some kind of involved narrative that blows your mind. There isn't a story. What about the graphics? This is in the visuals in the game. This is another hugely strong part of Deep Rock Galactic Survivor. But there's a lot of like indie auto shooters out there that do the job and have cool stuff going on but they don't have you know the best presentation this game's presentation is amazing i'm playing this in 4k and it has no problems in performance the the visual the flashing lights the glowing power-ups the enemies the design it's just so good the visuals are top 
notch for this space. What about the audio? How, how about the music and the sound and the voice acting? Again, another area where Deep Rock Galactic Survivor really shines. It's got great voice acting, it's got cool music, it's got great sound effects. So the visuals and the audio are very, very well done. Now, what about the style? How do you bring all of this together and ask the question of does this game have a soul, does it have a unique identity, and does it have a sense of style? Yes, this game does have a sense of style because it is Deep Rock Galactic. So it's like very much drawing from the intellectual property of the Deep Rock Galactic universe and bringing it to life. And it's like, this is exactly what I would expect Deep Rock Galactic to be like in an auto shooter in some ways. And so in that sense, yeah, it's got it's cool. It's got dwarves. It's got mining. It's got, you know, weapons and it's fun. And so the style is there. It's great. But if you're not a Deep Rock Galactic person, some of that will be lost on you, of course, and yet it doesn't really matter. Like, I think the style still shines through, and that's not where the game has deficiencies in the style department. That's all done. It stands out. It is Deep Rock Galactic, Deep Rock Galactic rather, in the Bullet Heaven space. So given all of that, putting it together, what grade would I give Deep Rock Galactic Survivor? Well, I always like to ground my reviews in the Steam reviews and the Metacritic scores. So this is early access, which means Metacritic doesn't have much. Um, the only review I saw that actually postulated an early access review gave it an 80. And, you know, it was generally favorable stuff. On Steam, there's 19,000 very positive reviews as of right now. And I'm in that camp. I think that this game shows a lot of promise. It's so polished. It looks great. However, because at the end of the day, I think that once I get over how good the visuals are and how polished it is, will I be brought back by just unlocking stuff if there aren't if there isn't more variety between my runs? And that is the question that I must ask, and this is why I give Deep Rock Galactic Survivor right now, I give it a B. I think this is a good game. I think it has the potential to be great. But I think that some of the, the meaningful decision-making is absent, which holds the game back in the space. It's not Halls of Torment. It's not Vampire Survivors. You know, it's not like I'm in there really, really thinking, okay, I need to make these choices to survive, and I need to make these choices in order to, like, try to break the game and just get crazy damage numbers and, you know, have my best run ever, that kind of stuff. I haven't seen that yet, and I need that to elevate the game's score. It's early access. There's still a lot of room for progressing it, for, for adding that kind of complexity and decision-making, and we'll see what happens. So I give it a B as of now, and I'd love to know what you think about my rev review. Like, what grade would you give Deep Rock Galactic Survivor at this point in early access? Have you played it? Have you watched others play it? Do you think I'm too high, too low? Am I being unfair on the game? Please tell me in the comments below where you're at with the game. And once I move from my own grade, I like to kind of just recommend this game and say, should you purchase it? Should you buy or try Deep Rock Galactic Survivor? The first thing I do when I'm recommending a game is I look at, if you like X games, you might like this game. And that holds very true for this. There is the possibility that you're just so into Deep Rock Galactic that you buy this and you just love it because you love that universe. That's completely possible. But if you're a person who likes Vampire Survivors, who likes Halls of Torment, who likes, you know, Bullet Heaven games and auto shooters, then yes, I think you will like this game. And I think you should definitely consider giving it a shot. Whether or not it's interesting and deep enough to hold your attention more than the others, is a question, but I think the price point allows you to justify the purchase, at least in my opinion. Now, what about the difficulty? Is this game prohibitively hard? That's a question that I always like to explore with reviews. How hard is it? As far as the difficulty, I actually have died on the first. I haven't been able to complete the first two missions because of the ramp of the enemies and the damage that the boss does. But I think that, number one, I'm not great at games, so there's that. But number two, usually with these kinds of things, it's just like Vampire Survivors. You're not going to beat the first level the first time you play it because you 
Number one, don't know enough about the game, and number two, your just account is not powerful enough. You don't have enough oomph. So you need more damage, you need more health, you need more survivability, movement speed, things like that to be able to clear it. And that being said, no, it's not hard. Like, yeah, you might die, but as far as playing the game, moving around, collecting power-ups, doing damage, mining, it's easy. This stuff is easy to do, and you just need to make your account stronger and get a little bit better to beat the boss, in my estimation. As far as the hardest difficulty levels, I don't know. I haven't been there, but if you're just trying to play this game and have fun, I think it's easy enough that you'll do that. What about the value? This is one of the things that Deep Rock Galactic Survivor has going for it as well. It's early access, so the value is very high because it's a cheap game. Um, it's, I think, $10 American, and I got it for $8 on sale. It's on sale frequently, so as far as like spending $8 on a game that's this polished in early access that is only going to see updates and get improvements, it's already got update one, which is a new biome, so you you know that they're, they've got a roadmap they're going to be upgrading in the future. I think the value is through the roof on this kind of a game if you enjoy it and you want to just keep unlocking. I think it's there. It's cheap enough. So I think, yes, the value justifies a purchase. And what about replayability? Well, that's just baked into this type of game. You're going to do another run and you're going to try to get further than you did the last time. Try to mine more minerals to upgrade your account and I think that the replayability is extremely high. So all in all, I safely recommend this to anybody who likes Bullet Heaven ARPG kind of games, auto shooters, or who likes Deep Rock Galactic Survivor. I mean, I'm sorry, just the Deep Rock Galactic Universe. I think, yes, I recommend this to pretty much anyone because it's cheap enough, because it's done enough in terms of its polish, and I have high hopes that they will tune this to be a, a very good game in the future. So, everyone, that is my review as of now, and I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. Give me your impressions on the game if you've never seen it before based on the gameplay footage that I've shared in the video, and I'd love to chat with you about the game. I hope you found this to be useful. Thank you so much for watching. I will put links in the description below to my Let's Play of Deep Rock Galactic Survivor, and if I decide to do a beginner's guide, I'll put those there as well. Take care, everybody.